Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us from. Uh, my name is Kelly Vian. I'm one of the Senior Assistant Directors of Admission here at NYU. Um, tonight, we're doing our version of Mythbusters, um, NYU edition. So really excited to talk through some of the, I don't know if we want to say most exciting, most common myths that we have um, here at NYU. I'm joined tonight by my colleagues, Kat and Annie, who you will have a chance to hear from later on in the presentation. Um, but really just kind of like a fun night for us to talk about some things that we are commonly asked, whether it's over the phone or email um, or even at college fairs, and hopefully help you debunk um, some of these myths we have and learn a little bit more about us and all three of our campuses. Um, just a few housekeeping items um, before we get started tonight. Um, please note that all attendees will be muted throughout the duration of our webinar. There are the options to use the chat feature or Q&A, and um, so you can find those at the bottom of your screen. Um, don't be afraid to use that Q&A box. We will be taking questions at the end of the presentation, um, and that's what tonight is about. You have myself, you have Kat, you have Annie. Um, we cover lots of information about NYU and our specialists in many different areas. I'm so very excited um, to share that information with you. Um, also something to note, while you can use the raise hand function, um, we won't be able to call in attendees. You will stay muted throughout the webinar. Um, so please, if you do have a question, use that chat box um, or the Q&A function um, throughout tonight's event. And before we wrap, wrap up tonight, we'll also be sharing information about how you can stay in touch with our admissions office, um, whether that's virtually over social media, upcoming events, um, or even just our um, regular email address. Um, but let's get started. We have a lot of ground to cover. I'm going to start by kicking us off tonight, just talking a little bit generally about NYU before we dive into our myths. Um, so something to note, um, our New York campus is our largest and oldest um, campus that we have. And um, we'll talk here shortly about our other two degree granting campuses. Um, but here in New York, we're located in both Greenwich Village as well as Brooklyn. Um, so we like to have our students be able to have a little bit of everything here in New York. Um, we also have 230 programs to study. That sounds like a lot because honestly it is. Um, it takes up about 2,500 different courses. Our students can do anything from study nursing. Um, they can also do social work. They can do the sciences like biology, chemistry, creative writing. They can study engineering. They can also study their own major that they create in Gallatin and so much more. Um, all 230 areas of study are housed in our 11 schools and colleges on campus. Um, so if you are thinking about NYU New York, it's time to not only do your research about NYU, but also maybe where you'd like to call home at one of our campuses. Um, if you are applying to NYU New York, you will have to apply directly to one of those schools and programs. So it is important just to understand maybe where your interests lie. But there's a lot more to NYU than just the New York campus itself. Um, we do have 12 global academic centers around the world that I'm always excited to chat about. Um, but we have two other degree granting campuses. One is in Shanghai and one is in Abu Dhabi. Um, our Shanghai and Abu Dhabi campuses are a little bit smaller than our campus here in New York. Um, so not only giving you that NYU experience, but also kind of the smaller school environment, smaller class sizes. Um, and again, still the NYU nature, still the NYU environment, um, also built right into the cities that they're located in. So if you are familiar with NYU New, NYU, New York, um, just know that you're gonna still have peers all around the world studying at any different point, whether they're earning a degree at one of our other campuses or doing a study abroad program. Um, that also makes our alumni network so vast with over 500,000 alumni. There's pretty much, you pretty much can't go anywhere without running into one of our um, students or, or alumni. Um, so definitely spanning almost every single continent. Um, I'll get back to you about Antarctica, but we're probably very close to having someone there as well. A couple other things I want to share about NYU. I mentioned those academic learning centers and I mentioned our three degree granting campuses, but I think this slide really just gives you a picture of like our whole entire reach. Um, so again, we span almost every area of the globe. Um, at any given point, we have students that are studying their passions, that are interning, that are doing research, that are really engaging in the cities that they study in. Um, and some of the myths that we'll talk about today have to do with some of these locations um, and doing research and interning and what abroad. So that being said, let's dive in. Let's talk about our first myth. So our first myth is that NYU doesn't have a campus. That could be New York City. That might be in Shanghai. That might be in Abu Dhabi. And yes, we do talk about being a campus without walls. But we're also really proud to say that means the city is your campus. So whether you're in New York and you're studying in Greenwich Village or you're studying in Brooklyn or maybe you have a class in Midtown, um, maybe you're doing an internship somewhere in the city, maybe you're in Shanghai and you're located in Pudong, which is the heart of the financial district in China. Maybe you're in Abu Dhabi and you're in the Sadiat Cultural District. 
you are never too far from anything. And so while we don't have walls, our students are integrated with both the campus as well as the city. They can go to and from. There's never a point where they have to be, you know, only at one point of the campus or only at one point of the city. Um, something I also like to highlight is when you're looking at the NYU campus, you'll notice that our buildings have the purple flag. Or maybe you haven't seen that just yet. And when you have a chance to go to campus or do the virtual tour, you will be able to see that in, in our photos. Um, so while we don't have walls or we don't have a defined campus, you can really identify you know, what facilities belong to NYU, what part of the campus am I in, and what part of the city am I in, whether again, you're in Shanghai, Abu Dhabi, or New York City. That does not mean you have to walk far to get to your classes. And um, typically parts of our campus are pretty close together. Um, you might be thinking, well, you said Greenwich Village and you said Brooklyn. We do have shuttles that run between both or on a nice day, you can take a city bike or you can even walk across the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, so definitely lots of ways to get to and from all of your campuses. Um, even your residence halls. Um, so for example, in Shanghai, um, the residence halls are uh, about a 15 minute ride away from campus. So again, kind of using our transportation, um, we're taking a walk on a really nice day to get you to and from those, those areas of campus. And then I mentioned visiting, whether it's in person or virtually. Um, we do have limited options to visit in person. Um, those can be found on our website. We have a lot more options to visit virtually as you are doing today, um, but we've options to hear about our Shanghai campus, Abu Dhabi campus, and then also our New York City campus. Um, so stay in touch with what's available on our website, on our virtual visits page, um, whether that's taking a tour itself, maybe you'd like to do a deeper dive into one of our facilities, that is all going to be available for you online. Let's go to our next myth. So does not having a defined campus mean it's hard to make friends? We often get that question and we understand coming into, you know, your first year of college or maybe as a transfer student, that might seem a little bit scary to think, how do I know if I'm on campus or not? You know, how am I integrated into the city? How does making friends work? Um, there's lots of different ways to find community at NYU, and that spans all three of our campuses. Um, so a lot of our students like to highlight their experience at something called Welcome Week. And so Welcome Week is hosted at all three of our campuses. It is made up of over 500 different events. That's a lot to do. Um, some of those events are, you know, how to get, how to navigate NYU, uh, maybe like how do I find my classes or how do I use my ID card. A lot of those events are fun as well. So icebreakers, meeting your peers, meeting other students in your, in your major or meeting other students in your residence halls. And then some of it are NYU traditions. Um, so something that we even held virtually is our annual talent show. Um, so again, ways to connect with your peers, whether it's on your main campus or maybe while you're studying abroad um, at any point in your journey. Then comes housing. We still have residence halls or, or housing facilities at all of our campuses. Um, and so you may meet your peers, whether it's a roommate, whether it's someone that lives on your floor. We have resident assistants to host programming within your residence hall. So Maybe you're having an ice cream social, or maybe you're taking a tour of the city that you're in to learn a little bit more about that. Lots of ways to get introduced to folks that live immediately close to you. We also have theme living opportunities. Um, so maybe you're a student that's looking for a specific type of housing. Um, you may be able to find a community before you even arrive on campus by electing some type of themed learning or themed community. Um, and then last but not least, clubs and organizations. Of course, you wanna get involved in the things that you love. We have over 300 different clubs and organizations on our campuses, anything from academic clubs like biology to fun clubs like the Cheese Club. Um, maybe you're someone that's interested in the arts, whether that's performing or visual arts, plenty of opportunities to do that. Or maybe you're ready to do something new. Um, we host Club Fest every fall semester, and that's your chance to learn a little bit more about the clubs and organizations offered at NYU. And then, you know, find those things you feel comfortable with, but then also find those opportunities that you never had a chance to try. So again, lots of ways to find community. Doesn't mean anything, you know, that we don't have that defined campus feel. There are still lots of ways to meet folks that have a similar interest um, to you or maybe try something that is just brand new. Myth number three, the environment at NYU is competitive. Um, NYU is a selective institution. It's an academic institution. And yes, you are here to study. You're here to earn your degree, uh, but that does not mean the environment is competitive. We have a lot of ways for collaboration at NYU. Um, some things to highlight are our entrepreneurial lab or our e-lab. Um, and so in this space, um, all 10 of our schools at the New York campus come together to really develop ideas, propose new topics, maybe learn from the board of directors about you know, how to write a proposal or how do I gain funding for my idea. And then this is that space where you can work outside your major. 
So maybe you're majoring in, let's say the arts, but you're really strong in computer science. This is your chance to work on some of those projects that maybe you're just downright passionate about. So again, this lab is open to all of our schools. Um, lots of creativity goes on in there. Lots of big ideas come into play. Um, really a neat space to just even see what other students are bringing to the table. Even if you don't have an idea just yet, it may inspire you to find one. Research is another excellent place. Um, whether you're at your home campus or studying abroad, we are the largest private research institution in the country. And so there's lots of opportunities to, again, do it with inside your major. So maybe it's something related to your philosophy degree or it's something within journalism. Um, but maybe it's something that, yes, you have skills in, it's not necessarily your major, um, but you found an organization or you found a team of folks that are working on a project that you know you can bring skills to. So again, a great space to really collaborate um, with students from other backgrounds or even other campuses, um, other academic interests and other academic trends. And then last but not least um, for collaboration, talking about minors and taking other classes. Um, I hear so often from students that, you know, I'm picking my major, but I'm also interested in, you know, this, or I'm interested in that. Um, and so minors can be quite common for our students at NYU. They do not have to be related to your major. They can be in different schools than you're currently studying in, still giving you that chance to really be next to students and engaging in topics that you have interest in. Um, but maybe you're thinking like, hey, I just really want to try something. I don't think a minor is for me, but I want to make sure I can have this experience at NYU. You can definitely just register for a class or two, um, chat with your advisor, you know, make sure you try something out. Again, if it's brand new for you, absolutely go for it. Um, but just another way that NYU um, allows our students to work with students from other academic disciplines and really kind of bring those ideas together or, or bring those skills together um, that students from different backgrounds may have. And then the last myth I'm going to talk about today is that you need to learn Mandarin to study in Shanghai. Um, if you were listening to me earlier, I talked about all those academic learning centers across the world. I talked about all of our different campuses. And so you may think, well, of course I would need to know that to study in Shanghai, but that is not true. Um, so all of our campuses, even our academic learning centers, the language of instruction is English, even in Shanghai. Um, so please note, if you've got no experience in that space, that is totally okay. Um, we're really looking for students um, to go to our Shanghai campus that are open-minded, really looking for exploration and just downright you know, passionate about learning. Um, our students in Shanghai will graduate with a proficiency in Mandarin among uh, many other things. Um, so again, no experience needed to go to Shanghai and study um, as well as all of our other campuses around the world. Um, that language of instruction is going to be English, um, but you're gonna learn a lot along the way. So whether it's Mandarin or another language at your campuses, again, you're really going to be engaged in those communities there um, and have a lot of room to grow during your time at NYU, wherever the location is that you're studying at. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass this off to my colleague, Pat, who's going to take us into our next minute. All right. Hey, everybody. Just to really quickly introduce myself. My name is Kat Jennings. I'm an assistant director of admissions here on the New York campus, but super excited to talk about the Abu Dhabi and Shanghai campuses as well. And I'm actually an NYU alum myself. So if you have any student questions, student life questions, what housing's like, all that good stuff, put it in the Q&A Q &A box. I'd be really excited to chat about it during the Q&A section later on. Uh, just for context, if you're curious, I double majored in math and philosophy in the College of Arts and Science with a minor in physics. So I'm a big College of Arts and Science fan, but can certainly talk about our other programs as well. So I, start, I want to start by talking about our myth five, I can't be undecided at NYU, which is my favorite myth because it is absolutely false. And I do know that choosing a major can feel like a very daunting task. You know, it might feel as though you need to pick something that you've got to commit to for the rest of your life right now, which is a lot of pressure on a 17 or 18 year old. And even older, even I find that pressure hard at the moment. And at NYU, we do have over 270 majors to choose from across our three degree granting campuses. So it can be difficult to narrow things down, but please do know that you are not alone. Depending on the year, about 20 to 50% of applicants do apply undecided to NYU in some form. And some of those have a general idea of their interest, while others have absolutely nowhere to begin. And that is absolutely fine. NYU's got great options for that. And no matter where you fall on that spectrum, it's really important for you to know that the admissions counselors will not review you any differently than someone who declares a major when they apply. It's definitely not a bad thing to be undecided. In fact, I love undecided students. I personally was a little undecided myself. So it's awesome to see people's varied interests and things like that. And the admissions committee cares less about your formal major 
better and more about what you're most excited to learn. And of course, why NYU is going to be the best place for you to do that learning. So first, I want to talk a little bit about the College of Arts and Science, where we have our undecided major, in the sense that on a common application, you can apply undecided. And what you're doing there is you're applying to the College of Arts and Science. So Kelly, if you could take us to the next slide. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. So in the College of Arts and Science, you can wait until the end of your sophomore year to declare a major. And while you're exploring your options, you're taking classes that fulfill NYU's core curriculum requirements. So classes that you need to be taking anyway. I think a lot of undecided students worry that they're filling their schedule with too many different things that won't count towards the end. It all absolutely will. So you're all set when it comes to that. And the core curriculum really provides a foundational academic experience for a general ed education when it comes to the liberal arts. And the College of Arts and Science also emphasizes student inquiry and research, which is really fantastic. And it offers unique opportunities for international and also pre-professional studies. So the College of Arts and Science is where you'll find our pre-health and pre-law programs, which you can apply into as well, even though they are not full majors. So say, you know, I want to end up at medical school, but I don't know what I want to major in in order to take the pre-health track to get to medical school. Applying into the pre-health track is a great option for you as well. And you can do that on the common application or, of course, the pre-law track as well. All right, next, I do want to talk about the Liberal Studies core program, which is my personal favorite NYU program. And like the College of Arts and Science, this program allows students to focus on the core curriculum for about two years before they then transition to another program at the university. And the flexibility with the Liberal Studies core is really unmatched compared to the rest of our programs, because in those two years, you get to take a variety of classes across the whole of NYU and not just specifically the College of Arts and Science and really explore all of those interests. So it's really, really broad. The core allows you to explore about 100 majors through the diverse and globally minded coursework of the program. It's really fantastic. So in the program, students get to learn how to write more effectively, think more critically, and so much more on top of that. And then the hope is that you'll fall in love with a particular academic discipline during that time, and then have a bit more clarity on the path you'd like to pursue. So it's really designed for undecided students, but it's fantastic for others as well. It's just a really, really fun program. And after the two years are complete, you either transition into you know, the College of Arts and Science, the Gallatin School of Individualized Study, lots of different options that you get to choose from there, or you can also choose to apply as a transfer to a select few programs as well. And students who are in liberal studies have the very unique opportunity to spend their first year away at one of our four global sites if they would like to do so, which is really, really cool. So you can actually spend your first year away in Washington DC, which might be really great for you if you know you want to be interested in journalism or politics or writing. And then you've also got Madrid, Florence, Italy and London, England as well. So a lot of amazing options. So it's really great for those of you with a global global and travel interest. So finally, on the New York campus, I want to talk about our Gallatin School of Individualized Study, which Kelly mentioned earlier. It's a really unique place where you get to meld multiple interests together to create a concentration. So if you're a person who's undecided, but you have a huge interest in a select few subjects that don't seem to fit together, or you're having a hard time picking one over the other, the Gallatin School could be the perfect option for you. It's not necessarily for folks looking to double major. So for example, I wanted to study math, and then through the core curriculum I discovered a love for philosophy and did that as a second major but I didn't study you know the calculus behind the philosophical concept of utilitarianism which is a real thing by the way interestingly enough but that would be a great concentration for Gallatin because I'm really intersecting those interests it's really for students who want that interdisciplinary approach to their studies where they get to combine all those interests into one and of course they have an academic advisor to help them do that and another great thing about Gallatin is that you can also incorporate into internships as part of your curriculum. So for example, I had a friend who uh, was actually creating his own concentration around advertising and the psychological effect that the advertising media has on the individual. And he was able to take an internship at IBM, the advertising corporation, as part of that concentration, use that as academic credit. So it's really nice to have that flexibility there. And then it all culminates in the senior year curriculum in your final year. 
uh, which is an oral exam in front of faculty advisors, which sounds scary, but all my friends came out saying it was the best few hours of their life. So I think it's all right in the end. So finally, I want to talk about undecided options for our Abu Dhabi and Shanghai campuses. So the great thing about these sites is that you do not apply directly to a major. So you instead get to spend your first couple of years trying out different subjects via the core curriculum and working directly with your academic advisor to figure out what's the best course of study for you. And then in the fall and the spring, on top of that, you have major exploration sessions and they're like academic festivals for undecided students. So you get to learn from faculty and upper level students about either the 19 majors available on the Shanghai campus or the 25 available on the Abu Dhabi campus. So whether it's you know data science, math, humanities, global China studies at the Shanghai site, or arts, humanities, engineering, science, social science, so many different things on the Abu Dhabi campus, they are both fantastic locations for undecided students to get the chance to figure out what they want to study. So next, we're going to move on to our next myth. So it's easier to be admitted to some schools compared to others. False, I'm afraid. And the reason for that is that we are looking for a lot more than just, you know, a certain GPA for a particular program or, you know, a particular student for a certain type of program. We are looking for fit. So if you're writing an essay and I can tell that you're a wonderful writer and in your personal statement, you talk all about your love of creative writing, but then in your why and why you, there's a sentence there. I'm applying for economics because my dad thinks that that's you know, a really good idea for my future or something like that. But for the rest of the essay, it screams, I want to be a writer. I want to study English literature. Then even though you might have an exceptional transcript and all these amazing things that would, of course, make you great at both economics and English literature, I'm going to want to see you applying to English literature because I can see that that's where the fit is. So keep that in mind. You know, this is something that you're going to spend four years doing. I was lucky. I knew what I wanted to study to an extent. I discovered another love, what I wanted to study once I got to NYU. And so I was able to really, really enjoy my four academic years. So make sure that that is what you're doing because college is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be expansive. And then on top of that, you of course have internships and jobs and all sorts of incredible access at NYU on top of that, that you then get to choose a future career in. So it doesn't have to be in what you major in. Major in something you love because then also from a technical standpoint, standpoint statistically you're more likely to get the best gpa if you study something that you care about which is of course going to be a great resume booster as well so if you want to convince your parents to let you study what you want to study that's a great statistic to go with all right so on to our next myth so i can only study business in the stern school of business guess what wrong you might be noticing a theme here with these myths um, business students at nyu get a real world experience that others only dream about and that is not just restricted to the stern school of business you know on our new york city campus you're going to live and learn within walking distance of wall street and global advertising and marketing agencies and of course hundreds of world-renowned businesses and brands covering industries like finance entertainment tech fashion sports you name it and what's more nyu's campuses in abu dhabi and shanghai make it possible to really gain that multinational business perspective in two world capitals of finance commerce and innovation so we're very very lucky to be in the three locations that we're in but even more importantly at nyu you can actually choose from the largest array of business programs in the country so there's certainly a lot to think about if you think you might want to eventually go into the world of business First of all, I want to start by mentioning our School of Professional Studies that has three business minded majors that specialize in certain fields. So if I'm reading that YNYU essay to say the business program in the Stern School of Business, where the student cannot stop talking about sport, you know, I want to be an agent for a sports team one day. I want to study away at the Madrid campus so that I can have an internship with my favorite soccer team while I'm there. You know, all these things, these are real things that we're seeing, right? And that student would be an amazing fit for sports management because that is exactly what you were going to be studying. I had a friend who is now at Harvard Law School who majored in sports management at NYU because he wants to be a sports lawyer. He wants to represent athletes. And I think with a Harvard Law degree, he's definitely going to be able to do that. So it's a really fantastic option if you're passionate about sport and interested in that. And then we have the real estate program. Of course, if you want to go into your own brokerage firm or anything like that, that could be a really amazing fit for you. And then we also have the hospitality and tourism management program, where, in fact, I was talking to a graduate of that program this morning, my good friend Isha, who works for Expedia, and she actually gets to lead her own team now, and she travels to a different 
country every single week. So that's pretty cool. That's what she wanted to do. And she definitely achieved it through that program. So make sure that when you're thinking of what do I want my future to look like, you're also considering everything beyond just, you know, I'm interested in business. Tell me a little bit more. I'm interested in business and I'm super passionate about baseball. Sports management program could be a fantastic fit for you, for example. Next, I also want to talk about the business technology management program at our Tannen School of Engineering. If you're interested in the business field, you may have noticed it's all about startups right now. It's all about deep tech. It's all about entrepreneurships. And this is a really fantastic program if you're interested in that. So I really recommend if you have startup ideas, if you're entrepreneurial, this is going to be a fantastic fit. We also have our music business program. So for those of you who are interested in working on the business side of Sony in the future or Spotify or data and things like that, that's going to be an amazing fit. You could, of course, create your own business minded major in Gallatin, like my friend did who studied advertising specifically. And then, of course, you can also major in economics and you can do that at any of our three campuses. But most importantly, study everything you like. You can always get access to business internships through our Wilson and Center of Career Development at NYU. And every school will have banks recruiting directly from that school and hosting recruitment and onboarding events and things like that. So you're always going to be able to get access to those opportunities. And of course, having a great GPA because you're studying something that you love is going to help with that as well. All right, on to our next myth. So once I'm admitted to a major, that is the only thing I can study. Guess what? It's going to be false, guys. And the reason for that is that NYU is definitely not built for students uh, who really, really want to study something, but just end up studying one thing. It's very much there to encourage students to do as much as they possibly can, as much as they want to. I already mentioned that I myself was a double major, and that's definitely not uncommon at NYU. A lot of my friends were double majors. And the nice thing about that is that you can pursue any major second major as long as it's through the College of Arts and Science, which is our largest school on the New York campus. So that means you have access to about 60 majors on the New York site. So let's say I was studying nursing in our Rory Mayers College of Nursing. That was my major, that was my home school, but I was really passionate about history of art. And I ended up doing a second major through the College of Arts and Science in history of art. I could absolutely do that. But keep in mind that the reverse of that would not be true. So if I were a history of art major in CAS, I couldn't then say, oh, I want to pursue a nursing major in the School of Nursing. CAS is the only school that you can do that second major through because of all of that flexibility. It's not the case with majors, but it's certainly not the case with minors. So at NYU, no matter what school you're in, no matter what program you're in, you're going to be able to pursue minors in other schools, in your school, whatever you like. I did a physics minor, so I stayed again in CAS, but I could have done the business minor, which is the most popular minor at NYU for obvious reasons. Perhaps that's another thing you can mention to your parents. I'll do the business minor, but I really want to study English literature or something like that. That could help them there too. Uh, you can do all sorts of minors at NYU. There are way more minor options than there are major options because they get, get to get a little bit more specific, more fun. So there's all sorts of different things there. And finally, built in as part of your graduation requirements, you're going to have elective credits that you can take. So you'll be taking classes for your major, of course. You'll also be taking the requirements for the core curriculum. But on top of that, NYU gives you a lot of freedom to try out loads of different elective classes. So if I were really passionate about musical theater, I could take some elective credits in that. I'm not going to get a, a minor in musical theater. I don't think Tish would let me. But they did let me take a two credit class where I was able to not in front of them and instead study the history of musical theatre, which was so much fun. And of course, I just did it for fun. I did that as an extra two credit class and it was really, really worth my while. So next, I'm going to hand off to Annie. Awesome. Thanks, Kat. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I've been talking to a few of you in the chat, a few of you in the Q&A box, but my name is Annie Wileson. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am an associate director of admissions and I've been working in the admissions office for about eight years now. But before that, I was an NYU student, just like Kat. My major was in the College of Arts and Science in psychology, and then I minored in gender and sexuality studies, and that wasn't enough for me. So then I also did my master's degree at NYU in higher education and student affairs at our Steinhardt School. So I think I'm what you call an NYU lifer. I've been here for quite a bit. So moving on to myth number nine, I can't study away if I'm majoring in 
insert major here. We get this question a lot, right? Because sometimes there are barriers to studying away, especially if you're studying a specific area. That is not the case at NYU. You saw that map that Kelly shared earlier. We have an incredible global presence. So we have 15 campuses around the world. Three are our degree granting campuses, New York, Abu Dhabi, Shanghai, where you can also study away. And then the rest are global academic centers. Now these are also NYU campuses, but on a smaller scale. They are built for students to study away for a semester or for a year. And because they're NYU campuses, while you're there, you're actually taking your NYU major and minor or core curriculum classes. So you don't have to worry about credits transferring over. And just like our students are moving across the globe, our faculty members are as well. So the classes that are offered at all 15 of our campuses is very dynamic. So what you see right here is the Global Study Planner. And this is a tool that I absolutely love, and you can actually play around with it right now if you want. This is what students can use to see where they can study away based on what they're studying. So you choose your academic area of interest, preferred language of study, semester that you want to study away, and then it will show you all of the campuses offering classes in those areas. And students really have expansive options. We encourage all of our students to study away. In fact, we send more students to study away than any other college or university in the country because we have this network of campuses. And beyond being able to take your classes while you're studying away, we take down another barrier and that is financial support. Your financial aid actually travels with you regardless of where you go in our network of campuses. So you don't have to worry about those two things, credits transferring over or financial support when you're studying away because you're studying away through NYU and we provide all of that support while you're traveling across the globe. When I was a student at NYU, I spent a semester at our campus in Florence, and I was really excited to study in Florence because I took Italian in high school, wanted to continue it while I was there with the hope of becoming fluent in Italian, but I was also interested in taking psychology courses while I was there. So I took developmental psychology, which was obviously talking about the same basic psych theory that I would have been learning in New York City. But what was unique is that we talked about the Italian approach to psychology. So when you're studying away, you're getting that immersive experience really learning about that area of the world so that you understand your academic area in a global context. I also took a class while I was there called Italy during the Renaissance because you can't go to Italy and not study the Renaissance. And this course would actually frequently meet in the city center of Florence. And we would see pieces of the Renaissance in art and architecture around the city instead of just reading about it in our textbooks. So that's a really big part of the NYU experience is having that global mindset and not just graduating as an academic expert, but then also understanding, understanding your academic area in a global context as well. Now, we often hear this myth when it comes to two areas of study one of which is the arts. So we have a lot of different artistic programs here at NYU, and they are housed in the Tisch School of the Arts, as well as the Steinhardt School on our New York campus. And then we have some artistic majors at our campus in Abu Dhabi as well. So many people think, especially for the New York City campus, because our artistic programs are conservatory style, that you won't have the flexibility to study away. And that's just not true. So you'll see on the next slide that we do have some very specific options for students who are studying the arts. So on the left hand side, we have a few of our campuses, Accra and Berlin, and then also you'll see Havana, Cuba. Havana, Cuba is not one of the NYU campuses, but we have a partnership and do a program there that is specific for our art students. So we even have options beyond the 15 campuses that we have. And when you're studying with one of those partnership campuses, we make sure that your credits are transferring over to NYU. And when you're studying the arts in these different sites, 
the programs are really drawing on the artistic history of that area of the world. So for example, if you are studying theater studies in Ghana, you're exploring African women playwrights. In Berlin, we have something called future pop music studies. We also have a Shakespeare performance program in London. So again, you really get to understand that area of the world. So we have Havana, but then we also have a program in Amsterdam as well. And I think I saw that a few of you might have been interested in that. And something that's also unique about the arts at NYU is we do have a few campuses in the US outside of New York City, including one in Los Angeles, which is obviously an artistic capital of the world. So our art students have a unique opportunity to study at that campus as well. Now the arts is where we hear this, but then we also hear this with engineering. A lot of engineering students think that they can't study away just because those programs tend to be very intensive in terms of the academic requirements. Again, as with all of the myths that we've shared today, that is not true at NYU. Our engineering students can absolutely study away. And there are a few different options for that. So they can study away through our NYU programs and all the global campuses that we have. In Shanghai and Abu Dhabi, we have engineering majors. New York City has engineering majors as well. So we see a lot of students moving between the three degree granting campuses. And then at our Tandon School of Engineering, that's based at the New York City campus, they have a few specialty programs, including Global Engineering Education Exchange, um, most commonly referred to as GE3, which is designed specifically for engineering students and it's an exchange program. So students can go abroad to 36 universities in 23 different countries in Asia, Australia, Europe, Latin America, and the Middle East. And they're of course earning credit that will transfer to their degree. A significant number of the courses for these programs are offered in English, but there are also opportunities for students to learn completely in another language if they are proficient in that language. There is also the Tandon International Exchange Program. And on the next slide, I just wanna demonstrate what these options look like. You'll see all of the countries where we have opportunities for the GE3 program for our engineering students at the Tandon School of Engineering. So at the end of the day, the answer is, regardless of what you're studying, you can study away. And we have so many expansive options that you can take advantage of. All right, moving on to our next myth, myth number 10. Research is only for science majors. Again, this is false. So Kelly mentioned earlier, we are the largest private research university in the United States. So our full-time faculty members are working on research and students are able to work on their research teams with faculty members. I was able to do that with one of my psychology professors and I actually got to help her close out the research that she had been doing for over 20 years. And while you can work with faculty members, there's also the opportunity for you to take on your own research projects. We mentioned a few of those collaborative spaces that we have open to all students. We have a number of grants that you can apply to to start your own research. And you'll see here, we have over 100 research centers and institutes across the globe. And it's not just in the sciences. We have things like our Center for Ballet and the Arts, our Center for Ancient Studies, Center for Disability Studies, Center for French Language and Cultures, Center for Human Rights and Global Justice, Center for Research on Culture, Development and Education, and that is just scratching the surface. And you'll see on the right hand side, we've highlighted just a few of the incredible research projects that our students are doing. So these are student research projects that you're seeing here on the slide. So we have a student in urban design and architecture, which is a major in our College of Arts and Science, looking at design and architecture and urban living in South Brooklyn. One of my favorite examples is masculinity, morality, and mobility in Harry Potter, which is being done by one of our students in English and American literature. We have effects of toy type and caregiver availability on infants locomotor activity in our psychology department. We have one that is looking on 
women's rights and voting outcomes for female candidates, for a student who's double majoring in politics and sociology, and then finally reimagining the role of schools in society, which is happening within our education department in the Steinhardt School, which is thinking about the response to the pandemic and how our schools are changing. So our students, our faculty members are really on the cutting edge and really interested in exploring in all different academic areas of study. So even if you're not a science major, you can do research at NYU. And kind of on the same topic and talking about science majors, our next myth, myth number 11. So this is a myth at NYU, but then also across higher education, I need to be a science major to be pre-med. And that is not true. You do not have to major in science to study pre-med. And at NYU, pre-med is a track and not a major. You can be pre-med at any of our three degree granting campuses and alongside any of the over 250 majors that we mentioned earlier. So any student can be pre-med. What's important about pre-med is that you are preparing to go on to medical or veterinary or dental school after graduating, right? And so the pre-med track or the pre-health track is really looking to see that you're taking prerequisites that you need to be successful in professional school after you get your undergraduate degree. So you're taking these classes, you need to apply, but you can take on any major that you're interested in. And I really love this article here, and you see that Kelly put it in the chat. It's talking about how medical school applicants can stand out without a traditional pre-med major like biology or chemistry. And medical schools are not necessarily looking for that. It's fine if you want to major in the sciences, but students who study different things during their undergraduate career are bringing a unique perspective to medical school. So some kind of facts and figures about our pre-med program here at NYU is that you're taking your classes you need to apply to medical school after graduation, but you also have access to pre-professional advisors. So these are advisors who are dedicated to helping to make sure that you are on track with your prerequisites, but then also with your application process to medical school or dental school. Those are very different than fill, think, filling out the common application for your undergraduate degree. So they are helping you to navigate that process. They are writing letters of support. So you have that resource built into pre-med studies, but you can study anything alongside it. All right, and now we're going to move on to our last myth. And our last myth is something that we hear quite a bit. Internships are only for business majors. Now, as you know, NYU is in big cities across the globe, right? And we mentioned earlier that we don't have a traditional campus, right? We are integrated in the cities that we're living in, and that is intentional. We want our students obviously learning in the classroom with their faculty members and students, but then we also want students applying what they're learning in the classroom outside of the classroom. And a great way to do that is having a job or an internship. And you'll see up here that the vast majority of our students have at least one job or internship while they're a student at NYU across all of our campuses, our students are engaging with this outside of the classroom. And we do have career development centers on all three campuses and sometimes even have services at some of our study away sites as well, where we have career counselors who can help you understand how to sift through all of the various opportunities that exist. So they'll sit down with you and review your resume, your cover letter, do a mock interview with you. We even have an app called NYU Handshake where you can search for and apply directly to jobs and internships. And we do have a vast alumni network. You saw the number earlier in the presentation, over 500,000 alumni. So students are connected to industry spanning nearly every field. And we've been in these cities for a while. We've been in New York City since 1831. So we've built really strong relationships with employers in the city. Now, 
With 93% of our students participating in at least one job or internship, that's a big number, right? And that's because many of our programs actually require that you have an internship to be able to graduate. There are programs that have field work built into the curriculum, like our Myers College of Nursing, where students are actually doing clinicals in hospitals around New York City. We have students who are interning in nonprofit organizations and also at hospitals and centers through our Silver School of Social Work. And then we have students in our education programs in the Steinhardt School that are actually student teaching while they are at NYU. So sometimes it is required for you to graduate to have this experience, but even if it's not, we encourage you to be building up your resume and getting this experience while you're at NYU. And so a few examples of what some of our students have done. We had a film student from our Tisch School of the Arts who interned at HBO. We had an international relations major who actually interned with Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, who is a senator in New York State. We had a global liberal studies major that interned at an environmental nonprofit and a studio art major who interned at an event planning company. So you really build up this experience and it prepares you for the workplace after graduating. And you'll see here that 92% of our students were either employed or enrolled in graduate school within six months of graduation. And about 60% of our students secured their job before graduating. And a lot of times that is their internship turning into a full-time job offer. So you're actively networking, you're actively getting that experience. And it also helps you decide which career pathway is the right fit for you. I found that incredibly helpful when I was a student. I had five jobs and internships and ultimately my experience led me to where I am today, which is talking to all of you. All right, so those are all of our myths and hopefully we've debunked a lot of them and you've learned more about NYU today, but we do want to get to your questions that we have here in the chat. I know we have a lot of them and there are a lot of great ones. So we'll start off with a question from Hallie. Can you please give examples of what themed housing is? And I am happy to take this on because I actually lived in a themed housing experience when I was at NYU. So we have a number of them and they are changing all the time based on student interest, but basically they're themed floors in our buildings like Geeks in the City, which is for students who self-identify as nerds, right? So those students are going to Comic-Con, they're playing Dungeons and Dragons. We have one called Laughing Matters that's thinking about comedy. We have one that is focused on inequality and justice. When I was a student at NYU, I was part of something called All the World's a Stage, which was dedicated to different types of performances in New York City. And on these floors, you're doing themed events that are oftentimes funded by the universities. So they're free for you to participate in. All right. And then we have a question here about scholarships and financial aid. So Zoe says, what are some scholarship and financial aid options for future students, which is a great question. Kelly, Kat, do you want to jump in here? I can take this. Oh, you go ahead, Kelly. Sorry. No, go ahead. I just want to mention, I did put the contact us slide up. So if everyone wants to take a few moments, um, kind of write that information down while Kat is sharing her answer. Um, it's there for you to use if you need it long after today's event. So go ahead, Kat. All right. Awesome. So great news. When it comes to scholarships to NYU, there is no separate application. So if you apply to NYU for admission and you apply for NYU financial aid, then we've got you covered there. So if you're a domestic student, so if you're a citizen or permanent resident, then you're going to be completing two forms for us when you apply for financial aid. And that is going to be the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, and something called the CSS profile. And I definitely encourage you to Google NYU financial aid. That what we're Website will pop up straight away. Make sure you're keeping in mind those deadlines, those things that you need to complete those forms, because of course you want to make sure you get those applications in on time. If you're an international student, like I certainly was back in the day, you will just be completing that CSS profile. So a little bit less time devoted to that there, but definitely make sure you're keeping to those deadlines. Awesome. Thanks, Kat. So we have a question here from Ben who wants to know how easy and or difficult is it to change majors? 
Absolutely. Thanks for asking, Ben, um, because we get this question a lot as well. And I know Pat talked about double majoring or adding minors, and we talked about your ability to study all the things that you love. Um, but what if you come to NYU and you realize you thought you loved something and then need to change your mind? And that is possible. Um, we just ask that up front, you do that research, you really think about maybe where you'd like to call home, but we do have something called the internal transfer process. Um, where you can essentially apply to move to another home college at NYU to go ahead and study what you love. Um, so that should be a backup plan. We still want you to really do that thinking before you get here. But there is a plan in place. If you would change your mind, you can talk with your advisors, maybe even talk with your career center about where you know your interests lie and what direction you'd like to go before you go ahead and fill out that, that application to, to internally transfer. Um, you will need to do that before your junior year, but the good news is you'll have lots of experience before that. Um, so definitely lots of experience in the classroom, out of the classroom, talking with other folks on campus to really help you again, kind of just decide on where those interests lie. Um, for some students though, maybe you're not ready to do an internal transfer and you just realize maybe a minor or adding a, a second minor is something of your interest. So talking with your advisors is going to be a big part of this process. There's a lot of ways to study what you love and it may not essentially mean leaving that home college. Um, so just know a lot of things are possible and there's a lot of great people on campus to help you navigate that. Thanks, Kelly. All right, so we have a question here about the YNYU essay. I know Kat, you mentioned this a little bit earlier in the presentation. So are there certain aspects about the YNYU essay you'd advise applicants to avoid or emphasize? Ooh, great question. I love that. So I think when it comes to avoiding things, I use the college test, which is what I call when you read a sentence, if you could take out NYU and replace it with any other school. So if you're talking about, you know, I'm really interested in majoring in biology at NYU, that applies to pretty much every university in the United States that sentence right or if you're talking about new york city that could apply to loads of different universities so do that test as you're going through that essay and this is where 10 to 15 minutes of research can really make a yny usa absolutely fantastic that is all it takes if you're saying to me there's this professor in the biology department that's doing research on alzheimer's and i really want to join him on that research i'm applying for pre-med you know if you're giving me all this context and you're making it impossible for me to disconnect you and NYU in that sentence, then that's a really fantastic essay. You know, if you're telling me the different clubs that sound of interest to you, you know, say you're really interested in dancing, you're on your high school dancing team, Google NYU dancing clubs and see which of those might sound interesting to you. You know, that kind of research can really make or break it. So focus on NYU specifically is my big tip and avoid a love letter to New York City, Taylor Swift lyrics, Jay-Z lyrics, we see it all. Instead, just get really specific and tell us what you bring to us on campus. Awesome, thanks Kat. So I think we can take maybe just a few more questions. So Alexander asks, what are some of your favorite clubs at NYU? So I can answer this, Kat, you can answer this. Kelly, I don't know if you've come across like some that you're really excited about. My favorite club at NYU, I think is the Cheese Club. Um, it's for students who really appreciate cheese. They get a budget to try different cheese together. So your community at NYU can be incredibly niche, but it can also be really broad. Just for some background, we do have over 300 clubs and organizations and they span anything from student interest groups, like I just mentioned, but we also have 23 division three athletic teams. We have a huge community service presence on campus. We have spaces for different faith groups on campus. We have artistic groups that are open to everyone. So even if you're majoring in the sciences, you can join an acapella group. We have some of those more traditional things like mock trial and model UN. But one of my favorite things about NYU is that we very much mirror the cities that we're in and that we are a collection of a lot of different communities. There is no one group that dominates campus. We really allow students to join these smaller, tight-knit communities that represent their different passions and interests. So Kat, Kelly, I don't know if you have a favorite one, but I'm also going to put a link in the chat where you can search for different club and organization opportunities. Yeah, I think the only thing I would add is that 
300 clubs is a lot. I know it's like the major thing out here. That's a lot of options. But the good news is that at the beginning of every academic year, we have something called Club Fest on every campus, which is where every single club and group meets in one building on campus, the NYU Student Center, which is called the Kimmel Center. And it's right on Washington Square Park, the middle of the campus. So you get to window shop absolutely everything. So it's always a joke that everyone signs up for 15 to 20 clubs and says they're going to commit to that. And then it narrows down to about three or four eventually. Uh, but it's really, really nice to, to get a taster of everything and chat with people from those clubs as well. I always like to put a plug in too of like, this is your time to try something new. Um, so I know our computer science club actually hosts events for those that may be not savvy in computer science. So I'm like, why would I join computer science club? I don't know anything, but the purpose would be to like learn about computer science. So yes, it may not be your strength. You may have never done it before, but there are opportunities with our clubs to like just kind of learn about something, maybe give it a try. You may only go once or twice, but the point is there's so much to do at NYU, um, a lot of people to meet and really just opportunities that you may have not had before. So highly recommend um, just giving it a, a try no matter what it is and, and seeing where it goes from there. All right, so I think we are running out of time. I know we didn't get to all of your questions, but please feel free to reach out to us at any time if you have questions. I'm going to put both our email address, but then also our phone number in the chat. Our phone line is accessible Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. We would love to chat with you over the phone, or if you'd prefer email, it's very simply admissions at nyu.edu. So hopefully you all learned a little bit more about NYU today, and we demystified some of those common myths Thank you all so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and we hope that you and your families are safe and well.